Hi, I'm Chuck Dorset for Weaver Leather Supply, and we're going to talk about stamp tools. On this one, we're going off script. I'm going to roll here because there are so many things to say. Now, hand tooled leather. That's a bit of a catch all because we've got carving and we've got stamping. Now, we're not going into the carving tools. We'll get to that at a later date. What we're going to do is go into all the other stamps. In fact, there are so many, I've broken this down into seven segments, seven categories. It may be nine once I get rolling here, but geometrics right up front. I love these tools because we can take one tool and make multiple designs. But also, if we do that, we're going to see additional designs emerge. That's very cool. You'll see what I'm talking about there. All right. So anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to our website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over here, talk about some basics. There's a big difference between a cheap and an inexpensive tool. Right here, cheap tool. Look at the bow on that. I'm not going to claim that. I saw that along the way and asked if I could have it simply as a sample of a bad tool. Well, there it is. But in all honesty, this could be a bigger problem. If we haven't prepared our leather for, for stamping or tooling, what's going to happen is we're going to drop this on our leather and we're just going to lay into it with our maul or our mallet simply trying to get an impression. We don't have to do that if we've prepared our leather correctly. Right here, an expensive tool. This is our one of our basket weaves and it's one of my favorite designs. But watch this. If we've cased our leather, and we're going to talk about that, but if we've cased our leather, that's all we have to do. Look at that impression. That's beautiful. It's burnished a little bit because we've cased our leather, but also I can see every detail in that stamp head. That's what we're looking for. Now, casing our leather. So basically, we've got a great video on this, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to wet our leather. We're going to put it in our baggie, give it 12 to 24 hours, pull it out and let it air dry. I would say about 90 minutes, but that can vary. But here's what we're looking for. We want that leather to start to return to its natural color right out of the baggie in about 90 minutes of air drying. If we do that, that leather is absolutely ready to stamp. Now, on our leather, this is our Weaver Select, my absolute favorite leather. Right here, this is our import strap side. Let's try an inexpensive tool over here cased the same way. Well, that looks good. Now, I'm a little heavy over here, a little light over here, but we're going to talk about that very shortly. We can correct that. We don't want to have to do that, but there's a way to correct that. Now, let's jump back over to a cheap tool because this makes two points. First off, I don't know if you can see it, but the head on this, it's like somebody just didn't take the time to polish that off. That's so rough, it almost looks like a backgrounder. But the second problem, we've got a lot of metal on this head. Right here, same thing. I love this stamp design, cool little Celtic knot, but what's going to happen when we try to stamp this? Same, same amount of pressure from my maul. Now that's not bad, but notice the difference. Yeah, so if you're having trouble with these bigger stamps, it's probably not you. There's just too much metal on the head of that stamp to really get a good clean impression. Now, last thing we're going to talk about, promise, then we're going to step over and actually start doing some, some cool stamps. You're going to be surprised at what these stamps will do. So right here, this is our line of tools. Love the packaging, first off. How cool is that? We've got a small 8 to 9 ounce piece of leather with the stamp design on it. That's a cool touch. But with these tools, I can't say enough. This is a tool that should cost about three times what it does. Beautiful brush finish. I can actually feel the weight of that tool. It feels like a quality tool. Good knurling. And some of these designs are fantastic. Yeah, again, you'll see, we're going to go all kinds of ways with these. So we've got a good feel for some basic tips and tricks for stamping. Let's jump over to our punch table, actually do some stamping. There are two things we're looking for when we're stamping leather. First off, obviously, we want our stamps to line up. And we'll talk more about that in segment two. But secondly, I want a very consistent impression with my stamp head. If we get close on both of those, what's going to happen is we're going to see some additional designs. We're going to start with one of my favorite tools. There it is. I love this because it gives us a very crisp impression. Now, when we're hitting our tool, the pros, 
No kidding. They can hit, move, hit, move, hit, move, and it's perfectly straight, consistent. That's not me. That's not me. The point I'm getting at there, if you're new to stamping, it's easiest, in my opinion, to make multiple small hits. In fact, I can actually work my tool around. But let's start right here. Yeah, there's that stamp. Love that design. Very crisp, very clean. But you notice, too, because we cased our leather, that's actually burnished. All right. Now, back to my point. Say we're new to leather and we hit that, notice, off sides. Well, it's very light, very heavy. Well, this stamp literally is going to sit right back down. I can almost feel it click back down in there. Let's work that stamp over to the right. Yeah, there we go. So with me, I typically feel like I'm in most control if I work my stamp around a little bit. That way I feel like I'm consistent, but at the same time, what I don't want is a double bounce. Yeah, I can't get that to happen until I don't want it to. Anyway, let's do this. So with this stamp, let's drop one right here. There we go, looks good. Now I'm gonna stack some up and out, and we'll see a cool design here. There we go. Now, perfect, this is not, and we'll talk about that later. But notice, first off, love the stamp, good impression. But secondly, now notice we've got a four-leafed flower in the middle of that. I know we kind of have to retrain our eyes, but also if we look a little further, We've got circular designs within this. So that's the point. If we can get these good, clean, consistent, and straight, we're going to see all kinds of things. So two more of the geometrics, and these are great. Simply different designs. There we go. Let's stack a couple of those. Okay, pretty cool. We've still got that flower design, though not as prominent. Now, right here, the center on these just screams for attention. Let's do this. Let's take our modeling spoon. On one end, we've got a sharp point. On the other, a ball point. Let's just drop that in right in the center of that. There we go. That kind of fills it out, doesn't it? We're, we've got a segment on combinations of tools, and we'll come back around to that. But very cool. Let's try one more. Now with this, good bit of metal on the head. So I'm going to have to lean into this or work it just a little bit more. There we go. But good impression. Let's stack a couple of these. Very cool. The flower, a little more prominent here. And yet again, we've got these circles. They're actually accented by the design on the tool. Love the geometric tools. Okay, I'm going to reset here. Let's jump over to one of my absolute favorites. Now, I forgot to mention this. Two of these stamps, we're going to look at these again here very shortly because we can add another element, and these make a great design. We'll come back around to that here very shortly. But right here, I love this stamp. It's got a bit of a Celtic feel to it, Celtic knotwork. But again, we've got a lot of metal on the head, so I would feel best if I work this in. There we go. Well, still, looks pretty good. We've got a nice design there. So let's stack a couple of these. Well, that lines up pretty good. Not bad, we've got these small intersections. Well, I didn't hit that one exactly on the nose. So let's do this. Let's take our cedar. Now we've got to back off on this because even a little bit of hit, yeah, our, our leather's cased. We're really gonna go deep there. So let's take our cedar and just drop in very lightly a cedar at every intersection. There we go. So even if we don't get these spot on, we can still cover that. And that actually looks pretty good, okay? Let's open this up a little bit. Well, very cool, we've got these wide open circles. Now that's just begging 
for another stamp to be dropped in. And we'll do that between this scene and the next. But again, not perfect. Now, if I was in my shop, taking my time, not on camera, I would be a little bit better at getting these lined up. But again, we're just kind of brainstorming here. But let's jump back over to that cedar. Let's see if this helps. Actually, it does, and it adds a nice touch to our design. Very cool. Love this stamp. All right, so our next, now with this, this basically represents two types of stamp tools. With this stamp, there's not much we can do but the intended purpose. When we jump over to this one, there's about seven or eight different designs we can create with this. This one's a little tough to keep lined up, so we're gonna do that one last. But right here, this is a cool little tool. Let's drop one in. There we go, clean and crisp. Now we cannot miss with this because all we're gonna do is connect two points. There we go. And there we go. Very cool, got this cool little design in our center. Great tool, but again, not much we could really do with this. We could always work, say, an edge design, but for the most part, that just makes a very cool design. Now, let's reset. We're gonna jump over to one that is very cool, but a little bit more difficult. With this stamp, like I said, it's a little tough to keep this one perfectly lined up over a distance, but we're gonna at least get a feel for the design. So let's start right here at the bottom. Good, clean stamp. Now again, I might come back in. My leather's starting to dry out a little too much. This is cased, but now I can drop that back in. There we go. See if we can get that a little bit more consistent. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drop that right on the top. And again. Okay, pretty cool design actually. That'd look great on a cuff or a strap or maybe a belt. Okay, let's go the other direction because now I'm gonna work down on both sides. Okay, not perfect, but a very cool design. Our next one, let's open this up a little bit. Now this is easier seen than explained so I'm gonna drop this in and then we'll look at, we'll look more closely at it. Okay, we've got a cool little diamond. We're simply connecting one half of the point. I'm gonna add a few more to this. Let's see a little bit more of that. That's a cool pattern. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of a cool triangular design. Now, I, I kind of missed it on that one. I sure did. But nonetheless, if we take our time, that is a cool design. And in fact, again, let's jump over here. Maybe right there, drop in. Well, that kind of fills it out. Very cool. Okay, let's keep going with this one. Now here, I'm going to go point to point. A little harder to line up. Well, there we go. That's a cool little line. Again, we've got now kind of a, a rectangular diamond shape maybe in the middle. That looks good. And we could always expand this out in all kinds of directions. Turning this tool, who knows what's gonna come out. Okay, we keep going. Let's do at least one more. And there we are, we can just drop those points together and now we've got just a cool little design. And in fact, you know what? I'm not sure, I still haven't discovered all of the ways we can go with this. 
I'd love to experiment working out from here. Maybe drop in a diamond and then another rectangle. So many ways to go. So take that ball and run with it. All right, so we've got a feel for our stamps. We're gonna step over to our other table and we're gonna step it up just a little bit. There are two reasons I wanted to put out some of our geometric stamps right up front. First off, these are a blast to work with. We could go so many ways. Pick up a stamp, some scrap, who knows what's gonna come out. But secondly, let's take these and think maybe one more step. Let's add some hardware. Now we talked about combinations and we're gonna do a whole segment on combinations, but I just had to drop this in because it's so perfect. So that's called a flower center. Right here, I've got our, our four-sided Celtic. I've dropped in my cedar simply to cover my intersections just in case those didn't meet up perfectly. Most, most didn't, but that sits right in the middle of that perfectly. Right here, we can just do a simple round hole punch. The point being, let's bring in a different color behind that. That is an in-depth design idea. Now, it'd look a little bit better with a lighter weight leather. We just see a little bit more red, but that's a cool idea. And my spots, I love my spots. They're inexpensive, they're easy to add, and they look good. Quarter inch spot sits right in that hole, almost like it was made to be there. Over here, small double cap rivets with what I think is one of my favorite tools. It's the sunburst that we just saw, but look how crisp and clean that stamp is. So let's spread those out, drop a small rivet in between. We've got a very unique border. Now I didn't set those rivets just so I didn't waste them. That's why they're moving around. But nonetheless, I love that look right here. Simply one more of the stamps we've seen, but now we're bumping up to a quarter inch spot. Yet again, it looks like it was made that way. That is just, that is too cool. If you like the futuristic look, this is our tri-weave, and I've dropped in a 3 16th inch, three, three sixteenths inch spot in, in our small diamonds. Very futuristic though. If that's the vein you like to follow, that's a cool design. So simply with our geometric stamps, and actually not many, we can do so many things. And that's exactly right. Like so many steps in Leathercraft, unlimited possibilities around every corner, and I think that's what I love most about our craft. Now I mentioned two things we're looking for in a stamp. Consistency, absolutely, but also we want these to line up. We're gonna come back around to that, but I think I'd like to add one more point to that. Let's have fun with it. That's the biggest point here. All right, so segment two, we're gonna talk about our woven stamps. These make great border stamps, but they can do so much more. I hope this is good information for you. Good luck with your projects and good luck with your stamping. Mm -hmm.